Another one to whisk review from your boys at the Buffalo Happy Hour. Today, we have a, um, a good one here. Oof. A little Lagavulin 16. Lagavulin 16 is a statement. I bought this three years ago, and I didn't open it up until the wedding day. That was kind of like my, I have this in the collection. Let me open it up, because what other time would I open this up? Maybe a firstborn? Yeah, I'm so excited that we have Logvolin 16 to review because this is one of those products that is heavily allocated. It's very tough to find. And do you remember, I love Isla Scotch to begin with. Do you remember what you bought this for? I'm not sure because I got it through a friend that knows somebody that knows somebody. You know what I'm saying? So I got it for actually – I think I actually bought this for 70 bucks, which is not what Logvolin 16 goes for. Through the Goomba network. Correct. So Miska. Yeah, so this is a very special product. I'm really excited to review it. Um, if you have gotten your hands on Lagavulin 16, it is very peaty, it is very smoky, and I cannot wait to fill this entire room with the nice smell of men. And see my reaction. Hell yeah, it's going to be great. So, Michael, where could you get this, potentially? I don't really know how to segue into the sponsor, so just talk about our sponsor. <laughs> Addie's, located in Williamsville, family-owned liquor store. They have an in-house wine sommelier, great selection. Download their app, Addie's App Store, Google Playground Play Store. And White Square Purple Grapes. Mm -hmm. You can download that app, search their inventory, and if you are in the great, highly taxed state of New York, you can have the product shipped right to your door. Addies, thank you for your sponsorship slash partnership. We appreciate everything you guys do with and for us. And if you want to work with Addies on their allocations, send them a message. Become Reach friends. out and see what they have to offer because it's a lot. I love scotch. Scotch, scotch, scotch. The description on the box says, Lock water rushing over Rocky Falls, barley malted over moorland peat. Slow distillation and long maturation in oak casks. All help us shape Lock of Lund's robust and smoky character. Time, say the Islander, takes out the fire but leaves in the warmth. I just love how poetic, short, sweet, and to the point they are. But like you just read that and you want to drink whiskey. I agree. I love I agree. that cool, dude. All I right, agree. so label branding. You're not going to find a classier box than this. Pause. Mm. Like, this is just classy. I'm not saying, like, anything crazy. This is classy. Yes, it's... Uh, you see this on the shelf, and you're like, to this, the is, point. this 100% could sell for over 100 bucks. It's to the point. I like it. Label branding for me... Here's the packaging experience. The bottle coming out. Green bottles oh, matter. Wow, we drank a lot of that during the wedding night. Yep. Was not expecting that. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Everybody sees Log Bowl in 16 and they want to try some. You so it looks like we have out, to finish uh, this. You gave out too many coins. Sure did. No, this was just like, you know what you know. Go downstairs and grab some. Um, but yeah, so Log Bowl in 16 on the label is even more detailed than the Nick Offerman one, which is kind of interesting. I wasn't expecting that. Now that you can compare it side by side. In the Nick Offerman one, you got Nick Offerman rowing his little um, canoe. I love that it's also 86 proof, the 16 year. Yeah. And it's 92. Yeah. So. Yes, it is. Math. This is the staple Lagavulin product. It's very classy on the label. You get the Lagavulin um, like labels, I guess, all over the place, which is sweet. And it's just very classy. Imported by Diageo, obviously, again, made in the island of Isla. Let's uh, let's pour this. Uh, for me, label branding on this one, I'm going to go A++. A++. I agree, I agree, I agree. I agree, I agree, I agree. Let's pour this bad boy out and get some nose, bro. Bless you. Real cork. Love it. Newsflash. It's 86 degrees in here. No, that's just what it's set to. Probably higher. No, it's not. I'm getting warm. This is dark. For an Isla whiskey, obviously it was aged for obviously it was aged for sixteen years. It listened to me. No, now it's full. Well yeah, but it listened to me.
So this is dark for a scotch. And obviously it's because it was in a cask for 16 years. But still, this you look at this and you're like, wow, this is... If you put this in a glass and you didn't know what it was and you couldn't smell anything, this looks like a bourbon. All right, so nose. It's mildly peated. It's when you look at the cross section of scotch, you have peat and you have smoke. Lagavulin 16 is more on the smoke. I think. Oh, I agree. It smells so good. Right. This is perfect for winter. This smells like and a, a nice fall night with a fire inside your house. Yeah, this smells like you're burning wood inside. Like you just got a nice little campfire with maybe some mm. nice hardwood that you're throwing in on the fire. This makes you want to take a nap. I love the smell. The peat is mild. It's very mild, and it's this is a super inviting Lagavulin. Good luck finding this, but it's so good. Uh, it's just so pleasant on the nose. But when you're talking about the difference, because we just reviewed Nick Offerman's 11-year um, 11 11 chart, when you're talking about the differences between those two, it's pretty dramatic because that it one is. was a very sweet peat. This one is a deep smoke. This isn't that oily either. It almost doesn't even have legs. There's a little bit of like the the peat on the back end, obviously, because it's a huge part about Isla whiskey. But it's nothing that's overpowering. This is more of like a dark oak. Like this is something that you have with a very nicely seasoned steak on the the stove that you're pan frying. Like this is that type of a whiskey. I'm going a plus plus, dude. A plus plus check. A plus plus check. I'm fine with that. Okay, I'll, agree, I'll, agree, I'll let you. I'll let you live in that realm. All right. I agree. Initial I agree. Taste. Little bit of peat. Obvious wood sugars. Sea salt. The initial taste is where you're getting some of that skunky peat coming through. Yeah. But it's then followed up by a very salted caramel, sea salt, and a little bit of like a. Like kind of like a seaweed, like a uh, like like a seaweed coming from the ocean. This tastes like the coastline. Yeah. If you were on the coast, you laid down and you just started. I don't know why. Started. I don't know why deep New York just came out you of my word hole. <laughs> <clears throat> you didn't rip it out of the ground. You didn't chew it and swallow it, but you gnawed on existing grass that's what this tastes like in a good way i don't know why you would try to get like the uh i don't know the photosynthesis reaction happening inside of your palate but that's literally what this is like it's not raining but you're just laying down on the coast in scotland and you just grab a couple blades of grass and just gnaw on it quick and then just walk away that's literally what this tastes like except there's a little bit of fire behind you with the smoke and you get a touch of peat but it's so smooth it's like silky Mm -hmm. it's astounding how smooth this is for a scotch from this region yeah and it's i don't i don't understand why i like this and i'm not supposed to because i love highland scotch and i just I can't talk to any strangers the rest of the day because they're like, you're an alcoholic. But Because it is 9.30 a.m. It's 9.30 a.m. <laughs> and I'm drinking a 16-year Lagavulin. <laughs> I, I, I wonder what them poor folk are doing. Yeah, right. But this is like... Uh, it's so wow, good. Wow, this is good, dude. 16 year, it is very difficult to find, but it is the best Lagavulin. You think? 100%. Hunt it. Just because it's so well-rounded and the... The whiskey sitting the, in the barrel for that long takes all of those sharp edges and just rounds them out. So your experience drinking it is very dynamic, but it's not surprising, I guess I should say, mm. because that you're not getting spikes. You're not getting spikes of different notes. You're not getting burned by the ethanol. You're not getting surprised by the peat. It's just very. It's like, literally like they put it in an envelope and sent it to you. There's no like, oh, this also contains anthrax. It's like, no. Yeah. This is just a very well-rounded 
product <laughs> that is delivered to you on a silver platter. And to me, this is the best Isla Scotch out there. From Scotland with love. If you know the reference, good for you. I love this stuff. This is good. Um, ending note. Well, did we give an initial rating? Because initial rating, I'm going A++. plus plus. Uh, that's fine. I agree. Okay. Yeah, we did. Ending note. You got to stay with me here because you're you're probably not going to like the way that the direction that this is going, but I promise you it doesn't taste like it. Have you had a Stella Artois, a Heineken, a Yingling, like a green bottled beer? People go All three crazy of those I've for had. me because they think that I'm insane when I say green bottles matter. But the reason behind that is because green bottles give off this skunkiness the skunky note, and I'm not sure how that works. I don't know if it's the way that the light is refracting through the glass. I have no idea. But green bottles give you this skunkiness to it, and if you ever had a Stella or a Heineken or a Yingling or anything that's been in the green bottles, you know what that skunky taste is that's left in your mouth after you drank it. This, you get that on the back end. There's some sort of skunky. It's been in... I just don't even know how to describe it, but it's like this skunky wet barley that you're getting or malt that you're getting on the back end that to me is just such a good note. And that's why I loved green bottled beers so much is because that note reminds me of Scotland and that skunkiness to it. I don't, I don't know how else to explain it. No, this is just fantastic. It really is. It's just good. Any note for me, I'm going A++. This is probably one of my favorite scotches of all time. It's up there really? with Oban. Yeah, it's up there with Oban, and it's up there with... Belvini uh, 14. Belvini 14, Caribbean cask, and it's also up there with the French Oak Reserve 14-year. You you get these different areas of Scotland, and they all are very, very distinct. Like, Belvini 14 will always be my favorite just because it's an everyday sipper. I don't know if I can drink this every day. No, this is perfect for the time of year right now. Right, yeah. So, I agree with you. This is one of my favorite scotches I've ever had. But it's definitely more of a, I'm, it's winter time. I just want one glass. I'm going to pour this out. And this is going to be like a milestone thing to get. If this was more readily available, I would have this in my house at all times. Because of how delicious it is. I would do the same. So I a would plus, do the same. A plus plus on the ending note. Yeah. So final where do we rating? even go from here for final rating? Because this is going to be high. Well, it starts with a countdown. Yeah. There you go. I love it. All right, Derek, give me that countdown. Three, two, one. 97. 97. Let's go, bro. 97. This is <clears throat> delicious. It's delicious. And if you haven't had it, try it. If a local whiskey bar has it, do it. It's so worth the pour. I, And I'm not an Isla guy. It's good. That's all it, I got to say. It's so good. They killed thank you, it. Thank you for letting me try this. Hell yeah, dude. We tried a lot of it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we did. All this morning. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, so that is the Wednesday Whiskey Review for Lagavulin 16. Have you tried? Have you been blessed to try Lagavulin 16? Because it really... <laughs> appreciate you, big guy. Have you, have you ever tried Lagavulin 16? If so, let us know your thoughts down below. What is your favorite scotch? Are you a Speyside guy, like Mike generally is? Are you an Isla guy, like Derek generally is? Or do you like anything that comes from that region? Because Scotland kills it with whiskey, and it's significantly better than Kentucky. I'll leave it at that. So anyway, um, thank you so much for joining. If you do have Lagavulin, congratulations. But always remember to drink responsibly, be a good person, and Michael. Do not litter. We're out. (laughs) 